sound. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk in the light of thy countenance, O Lord. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day. In thy righteousness shall they be And welcome as we gather for our online worship here on Sunday, May the 29th, 2022. It's been a very eventful week, especially with the shooting in Uvalde, Texas. We know it's, it's been challenging, but one of the things that really can help us is worship. Knowing that our God is in control. Knowing that we have a faith that can sustain us. A faith that can help us to keep going, even though we don't fully understand everything. And that is why I'm just so glad that you are tuning in for our online worship today. We're going to continue and finish up our series on looking at words that begin with May. And today, our focus, our word is Mayday, Mayday, a cry for distress, a cry for help. Next week, as we begin the month of June, we're going to do so with the Sacrament of Holy Communion. So, I pray that you'll remember and we'll let you know at the beginning of the service next week that we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion as part of our service next week. And just continue to ask that if you know of somebody that could be truly blessed and touched by our online services, to just let them know. Share it with them. That is what we're called to do as disciples, isn't it? To share the good news. And if at some point you are ready to join us for our in-house worship, we'd be glad to see you. It'd be great to see you in person too. But until you're ready, let us continue our worship as we start with our opening prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are excited because we are about to experience holy worship and we know god that we are pausing in the midst of this day whether it's the sabbath day that we're watching or sometime during the week we know god that when we pause and give you worship you are just saying my child thank you thank you for spending this time with me so we dedicate it to you and we know that you'll be speaking to us that you'll be touching us and inspiring us. So God, be with us as we offer you the best of ourselves in this worship right now. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So let us continue our worship with welcome to this house, followed by holy, 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 and our opening hymn for today. <laughs>
pray. Let us sing. We come to ask your forgiveness. We know, dear God, that one of the things you desire as part of holy worship is for us to come with pure hearts, with clean hearts, with repenting hearts. And that is our desire because we do want to give you the best of our worship. But we also know, God, that we're not perfect. We're not perfect in any means. Yes, we try our best to walk in your ways, but... If we're being honest, there are times when words flow from our lips that are unchristlike. There are times that there are thoughts in our minds that do not follow your ways. There are times that our actions are not pure and right and righteous. And there are times, God, when we just do things that go against your way. And for any time we've done that during this past week, once again, it's in this time of prayer that we confess. We confess each and every one of our sins knowing that that's what we need to do because your ways are the right ways and the pure ways and the righteous ways. So God, forgive us once again of our sins. Restore us back to righteous and forgiven living and help us, God, to say no to temptation and say yes to your ways through this coming week. We offer this prayer in Christ's name, who taught each and every one of us when to pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, here we are, the last Sunday of May. And in May 2012, we had a very significant moment in the life of our church ministry. And that was our final service at Knox Presbyterian Church where then we amalgamated together as one. And something we do on this Sunday we call our Amalgamation Sunday is take time to remember. So I invite you now to take time and remember some of the journey we have taken together as a two-point charge and now as a single-point charge with Knox. Let us remember.
Well, last week, our memory verse was from Psalm 116, verses 1 to 2. And it was a really great memory verse, if you recall, and I pray that you put it in your heart because it was a good reminder to us when sometimes we struggle with prayer. And the psalmist reminded us that God is very much listening to our prayers, that when we pray and cry out for mercy, God is listening. And remember the visual image he gave us, that God is leaning down, bending down from his throne, listening to every word. And I realized after that, there must be more in that Psalm 116 that the psalmist wants us to put as memory verses. And as I read through it this week, I came upon 116 verse 9, and I think this is a memory verse we all need to place in our hearts. This is what the psalmist says in Psalm 116 verse 9. And so, I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. And isn't that a powerful reminder for us that as we walk in our daily lives, each and every day, we don't do so alone that we walk in the Lord's presence. His shadow is with us. His hand is upon us. His presence is side by side with us. And isn't this something we need to remember, that we're not alone, that we have God with us no matter what situation, what crisis, what circumstance we are going through in life. So I truly encourage you, to make this another one of your memory verses that you'll be able to say as you maybe go through some situation in life and wonder, am I alone? That you will say, no. And so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. And one of the amazing things we know that when we close our lives to life here on earth, we will not just be walking in God's presence, we will be in His presence and see Him in all of His glory. But for now, one thing He assures us, we walk in His presence. A powerful memory verse for us today. Well, for our story time, I'm going to be looking at a story from Psalm 107. And we're going to be looking at some situations of distress. And I found it very interesting that in this one situation in Psalm 107, when some people cried out for distress, that God helped them. And we're told that the way God helped them is that He saved them by His Word. That He spoke and healed them by His Word. And I really got thinking about that. Because as we know, as we listen in a time of worship, there's a lot of words that God is speaking to us, whether it's through the hymns that we sing, whether it's through memory verses like we just looked at, whether it's through our scripture reading or the message that God sends or our prayers, God is speaking a lot of words to us. And as we see, one of the things God wants in the words He speaks to us is to heal us, to help us. And that's what I want us to ponder today. How much are we listening to God's words and letting them heal us? So, I want you to envision for a moment that here's a word that God has. And I share the word with you. And I give it to you. I hand it to you like I would a letter. Now, let me ask you. If you're handed that word from God, do you open it? And do you read it? And let's say you do. Then, do you let it heal you? Do you let it touch you and bless you? Now let's think of some of the words that God tries to heal us with. And just look at the words behind me. One is faith. So let's say, like last week, that Jesus is wanting us to have a stronger faith. 
and wants to heal us of our unbelief. He hands us that word, faith. I want you to have a stronger faith. What do we do with that word? Do we put it in our hearts and heal us as Jesus desires? Or let's look at the next word, hope. As we know, that's a word that is meant to heal us. So we sing a song that's filled with hope. And he hands that to us. What do we do with it? Do we ignore it? Do we just simply pass over it? Or do we put it in our hearts and let it heal us as Jesus desires? And how about the last word, love? That is something that God's word is filled with to try to heal us. Heal us of anger. Heal us of unforgiveness. Heal us and make us feel so much better through his love. But what do you do with that word? Do you put it in your hearts? Do you let it heal you? Or do you just let it pass over you? And I think that is something we need to ponder and think about. Because through the course of an act of worship, I'm guessing if I really had to sit down, how many words are we exposed to through God's hymns, through God's prayers, through God's scripture, through a preached sermon? I bet you we're probably hearing about two to 3,000 different words that God wants to speak to us. And many of those words are meant to heal us. Are we listening? Are we embracing those words? Or are we just sitting there and just saying, I put in my time. And you wait for the next time that you sit before God. One of those words that God is sharing in a time of worship might just been meant to heal you. And let's make sure that when God sends those words, we're letting them do exactly what God wants to heal us and bless us. That is our story time and pondering time for today. Let us continue our worship now with our next hymn. Well, before we hear our message for today, let us come before God, shall we, in our prayer for understanding. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
We are ready to hear your words because we have pondered as we heard in the story time and we want to hear the words that will heal us, that will help us, that will sustain us. So God, help us to be ready. Help us to be in a receiving mode and help us to plant those words as seeds of faith and hope in our lives. God, you're a good God and we are blessed to be able to hear your words spoken now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as I mentioned in the opening, we have been looking at a lot of words in the month of May that begin with the word May. We started off with God's use of the words may and may not and discovered that when God uses the word may not as we saw in the Garden of Eden, it's not meant to take away our fun or pleasure, no. It's meant to help us avoid making decisions that can lead to self-destruction, hurting ourselves, hurting others, or our relationship with God. Then, we looked at the word may tag like appliances, and we discovered just as Maytag used to advertise how reliable and dependable and trustworthy their products are, that we see in scripture, that is God, isn't it? How reliable and trustworthy He is as we saw, and how He provided for the Israelites for all the 40 years in their wilderness wanderings. Now, in the third week, we looked at another word that starts with may, and that was maybe, and realized that it's usually when we allow unbelief to creep in, in and amongst our belief, that we begin to have some maybes when it comes to Jesus. And we saw, with that father who had the boy who was possessed by the demon, that sometimes we say those same words that he did, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. And what does Jesus do? He helps us overcome that unbelief. So we have no more maybes when it comes to Jesus. And then last week, we looked at the word mayhem and realized it means chaos and extreme violence and disorder and realized that Jesus prepared us for it. Not so that we would be afraid of it all, no. That we could live in faith despite it, realizing that He is in control. That mayhem is just for a season and how we need to guard our hearts and our minds from the mayhem. So, today, we're looking at the word mayday. And that word is actually a call for help. It's a distress signal that is used both at sea and air for help. Now, whenever I hear that word, I'm reminded of a movie that I used to watch back in the 80s. It was called Uncommon Valor. And in this one scene, they have just did an operation at a former prisoner camp in Laos. And they've rescued some MIAs, some former POWs. And there they are in a helicopter trying to get back to safety. But the helicopter has sustained damage. And you'll hear the helicopter pilot said, Mayday, Mayday. American MIAs on board. Mayday, Mayday. American MIAs on board. Now, when you cry mayday and mayday for help or distress, you're hoping that you're going to hear a voice on the other end. But what was so interesting is that you never hear that voice in the movie. They just go on to the next scene. Well, sometimes the one we're crying out to help for in distress is God himself. And what we want to know is that when we do cry out to distress for God, that God is hearing, and that God will respond. And if we're ever wondering that, then we have the answer today, because we're going to be looking at Psalm 107. And as we're about to see, in Psalm 107, we see four cries for distress to God, and four similar responses from God. Now it's interesting in Psalm 107, that we see these four different examples of distress on people's part. Here's the first situation. The psalmist describes people that are wandering in the wilderness. Now, we don't know if he's referring to the Israelites as they wandered through the wilderness in the 40 years after the Exodus, or perhaps 
It was when they were wandering during the Babylonian exile, or maybe these people were homeless. We're not given the exact time frame, but here is what we're told. The feelings and the emotions that these people in distress were going through. This is what the psalmist says. They were wandering, lost, homeless, hungry, thirsty, and near death. And as you can see, they truly were in distress. And this is what the psalmist said that they did when they were in that moment of distress. They said, Lord, help. They cried in their time of trouble, and he saved them from their distress. Isn't it amazing? They cried out for help in their time of trouble. And the psalmist says they were saved from their distress. And afterwards, as they had time to reflect upon it, this is what the psalmist said. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and the wonderful things that he has done for them. So, that's the first situation of distress. These people were wandering in the wilderness. Now, he then moves and describes a second situation of some people in distress. And these people were prisoners. Now, once again, we're not told the circumstances behind them sitting in prison. Had they broken the law? Was it because they were being persecuted because of their faith? Or had they turned their backs on God and God allowed them to be put in prison? We just don't know. But as they were going through the distress of being in prison, this is the situation that was described. They were sitting in darkness and in deepest gloom. They felt broken, fallen, and no one there to help. Again, a terrible time of distress. But once again, the psalmist says this, Lord, help. They cried in their time of trouble, and he saved them from their distress. And once again, after they had time to reflect on what God did for them in their time of distress, the psalmist used these words, Let them praise the Lord for his great love, and for the wonderful things he has done for them. So as we see, two times he describes situations of distress. Two times a cry for help, and two times the Lord saved. Is there a pattern here? According to the psalmist, there is. Because remember, he not only described two situations of distress, he described four. In this third situation, he describes people who had turned away from God. That they decided to rebel. They decided to think their ways were better than God's ways. And because of it, they fell into distress. This is how he described their time of distress. They were suffering. They were unable to eat. And they were knocking on death's door. So once again, as they were going through this distress, what did they do? They cried. Lord, help! They cried in their time of trouble. And he saved them from their distress. And I love, in this situation, the psalmist describes how God saved them from their distress. This is what he said. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. And isn't that what we were exploring and talking about in our story time? He sent out his word and saved them and healed them from their distress. And you can recall and imagine, what did God say and have them do after they reflected on what God said? That they praised God from their lips for his great love and the wonderful things he had done for them. And finally, he describes a fourth situation of distress, one we would expect, sailors at sea. Because remember, mayday, mayday is a cry of distress for help at sea or air. So, the situation these sailors found themselves in was a terrible storm, so bad they cringed in terror. They reeled and they staggered as the waves and the winds crashed. 
and they were at wit's end. And sure enough, they said, Lord, help. They cried out in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. And sure enough, after they had time to reflect, the psalmist said, let them praise the Lord for his great love and the wonderful things he had done. So as you see in Psalm 107, there is a pattern. Four times, people found themselves in distress. Four times, they cried out, mayday, mayday. They cried out in distress to God for help. Four times he responded. And four times as they reflected upon it, they praised God for his great love and the wonderful things that he had did. As we see, one of the things that God does is when we cry out mayday, mayday, when we cry out for help in times of distress, God is there to answer. Now, when we go through distress, it is probably in very different situations than we see in this psalm. It's not likely that we find ourselves in prison. It's not likely that we have turned our back on God. It is not likely that we are at sea. But we still go through our seasons of distress. We've just gone through one in a pandemic. Or maybe our season of distress is a caregiving situation, those highs and lows, those ups and downs. Or maybe our situation of distress is a broken relationship, a broken marriage. Or maybe that time of distress is a health crisis where we're going through that uncertainty, that period of unknown. Or maybe that distress is what we're going through right now, the rise of costs, wondering if we're gonna make ends meet. So yes, our situations causing our distress may be different than when we read in this psalm, but aren't our feelings very similar? Don't we feel under deep gloom? Don't we feel like we're going through a moment of darkness and despair? Don't we feel like we're at wit's end and maybe knocking at death's door? So yes, the feelings are very similar what the people did in this Psalm 107, what we go through in our distress. But here's the question. How quickly do we call out Mayday? How quickly do we turn to God in those times of distress? Now we might be saying to ourselves, but in this Psalm, they seem to wait, and they did. And we know that based on some of the words used at wit's end. That suggests they tried every other alternative before they turned to God and cried for help. Or at death's door. Or on the verge of death. You can tell they waited and delayed before they called out mayday, mayday. And we might think that, well, the, probably the reason is, Dean, that remember some of them turned away from God. They turned their back on God. Yes. And maybe that explains why some of them waited so long. But here's the reality. Even believers hesitate and delay in crying out for help to God in times of distress. And why do I say that? Do you remember the disciples when they were at sea one day? And a sudden storm came upon them and there was Jesus asleep in the boat. The waves came crashing in. It was such a terrible storm, they thought the boat was going to sink. And it was finally, finally when they believed they were going to die, that they cried out, Mayday, Mayday. They finally woke Jesus and said, Lord, don't you care that we're going to die? Do you see? Even believers hesitate. Even believers wait till sometimes the bitter end before they're willing to cry out, Mayday, Mayday for help. I think we're beginning to see how foolish it is for us if we wait or delay or procrastinate in calling out for God's help whenever we go through times of distress. As we see from this psalm, God's not angry at us when we cry out for distress. He wants us to. As we see from each and every one of these examples, God is capable of helping us in every and any situation we find ourselves in in distress. And even, as we see in this psalm, if we have caused this of our own doing, 
If we have maybe been foolish and turned our back on God, He is still willing to help us in our times of distress. So here is the question. Are we going to turn to Him when we find ourselves in distress? Are we going to call out, Mayday, Mayday? If we do, you know what we're going to discover? We're going to discover two different blessings that come when we turn to God for help in times of May Day. The first blessing that we are going to experience is we're going to begin to have a greater sense of appreciation for God. And why do I say that? It's only when we go through suffering and distress that we begin to have a greater sense of appreciation. For instance, it's only when we almost lose our life that we begin to appreciate life so much more. Or if we almost lose a certain person in our lives, that we have a greater sense of appreciation for them. Same as with God. When we go through these times of stress and distress, and we realize God is there for us, don't we have a greater sense of appreciation of God's presence? That God is with us, that God is willing to help us? And that is one of the blessings we experience as we come out of it. And we saw that in each of the situations of the psalmist. In each situation, what did the people have? As they reflected upon it, a deeper sense of appreciation for God. Praising God with their lips, saying, How great is God's love and how wonderful He is in everything He has done. So that is the first thing blessing we experience, if we cry out to God in distress, it's going to help us to have a greater sense of appreciation for God. But the other blessing that it will bring to us is that afterwards we'll reflect and our faith will become stronger. Our faith will grow as a result because we will realize that God is faithful, that God is listening. That God is there for us. That nothing is impossible for God to help us with. And isn't that going to encourage us that the next time that we go through any ordeal, any crisis, any situation of distress, because our faith has matured and strengthened, we're not going to delay. We are going to turn to God sooner rather than later. So here we are. Coming to the end of our series on words starting with May. And let's be honest, in this fallen world in which we live, we are going to go through our situations of distress and crisis. That is a reality. That's something we can't avoid. But here is something we can avoid. Waiting. Delaying. Procrastinating when it comes to turning to God for help. Hopefully, we have learned today that the best resource we've got at hand is to cry out mayday, mayday. To cry out to God in help and we will know that God is not only listening, that God is going to respond and help us through that crisis. What a blessing on this day in May to know we have a God who is there for us in our mayday calls. May we use it. May we be blessed by it. And may we know that that is just one of the amazing gifts that God gives us in life. God bless and amen. Well, let us come before God, shall we, in our prayers of the people. And we have so much to pray about. One of the things we want to pray into is this situation, this crisis in Uvalde, Texas. And if you're struggling with it, I would encourage encourage you to go on to our website and see my midweek message that I wrote. And hopefully that will help you to kind of deal with your feelings, your emotions. It talks about Jesus' words, let the little children come on to me. And as children of God, one of the things that can help us is to come to Jesus in a time such as this. So let us pray as a community of faith. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have led us through this incredible series in the month of May, looking at so many words that begin with May. 
And as we've looked at each one, you've reminded us that you are always there for us. And today, even in the situations of crisis and despair, all we need to do is cry out, Mayday, Mayday. And we know it won't fall on deaf or silent ears, no. That you will be there, that you will respond, and that you will help us overcome. So may we take this word, may we take this message and apply it to our lives so that we don't wait till wit's end, we don't wait till we're knocking at death's door, that we will seek your help and grow in our awe of you and grow in our faith as well. It's with such sadness, Lord, that we learned of the news of the deaths in Yovada, Texas this week. To think that a gunman went into a school and killed all those students and killed the teachers. What sadness, what tragedy. So we want to pray into that situation this day, God, and pray for the people who lost lives. We pray for these young lives. And we know, God, there are parents grieving. Be with these parents. And be with the young students who lost colleagues in this situation. Help this community overcome this situation. Walk with them in despair. Walk with them in the loss. Walk with them in the suffering, God, that they are provided with the healing that they need. We pray, God, over this situation. We pray into the situation in Ukraine. Here it is going into its third month. And we're still seeing bloodshed. We're still seeing despair and loss. Be with those that are going through this, God. Help them to deal with their feelings and emotions. Help them to overcome. And we pray for a resolution into this situation. We pray for those going through illness. We know, God, many have lost loved ones. Many are going through illness at this time. Whether it's COVID, whether it's cancer, whether it's other issues that are causing them a lack of health, a lack of well-being. And we just pray, God, that you will heal them, that you restore them back to the health that they need. We pray for the grieving. We know people have lost loved ones. Some have taken their lives. Some are going through just shock and disbelief as a result of loss in their lives. And we just pray for those who have lost loved ones that you raise their feelings, you raise their emotions, you help them through their time of suffering. We pray for those going through addictions, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs. We know that it's such a powerful force in so many people's lives. Help them to realize the God that with your help, they can overcome it. They don't have to battle it alone. We pray as well. For those who are struggling emotionally, whether it's through anxiety and depression, we know many might be suffering, wondering, how am I going to make ends meet? Help them, God, to realize that you are there for them, that you will provide, that you will care for them. There's so much hurt. There's so much pain in this world, God. Thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you for the gift of hope. Thank you for your word that heals us and sustains us. God, as we go into this new week, may we do so knowing that we have your strength, that we have your love, that we have your perseverance, that we have your firm grip on our shoulders saying, my child, I am leading you, I am helping you. Thank you for this time of prayer. Thank you for this time of worship. Bless us, God, as we move forward. In Christ's name, amen. Let us join now in our closing piece for today.
but thank you for joining us for our online worship. I pray that you have been touched and inspired by it, and I pray that it is what you have needed to move into this new week, filled with hope, filled with love, filled with strength. I remind you that next week we're going to continue and enjoy the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And we're going to be looking at a series called What's Next? Looking at the Bible, reminding us what's next since we know we are waiting Christ's return. That is what we're looking at. It's so much unknown, but we'll be looking at revealing and seeing what the Bible tells us is what to expect next. I pray that you will keep giving, keep watching, keep serving, keep being blessed by the Word of God. After the benediction, we'll sing the God of Hope, and then followed by O Canada, our ongoing tribute to our frontline workers. And now, the benediction. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Fill you with hope, with joy, with love and strength. And may you know that each and every day, that wherever you go, at whatever time of day, God will always be with you. God bless. Amen. And we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us.